Hello, in this video we're going to look at simple linear regression and partitioning the total variability. That's such a huge important topic in linear models and design of experiments. So this is sort of a introduction to partitioning the total variance. So here it's, it's, it's part of a playlist I'm calling General Linear Models 1. And really I want to develop the intuition behind these types of variability with examples. And so the first one, we're going to let Y be the yield of corn per acre. And the 20 year mean, just we're going to call it Y bar. And the distribution looks like this, you know, I, we can say approximately normal, you know, the means in the middle and, you know, but the question is, what would you predict next year? Well, I, I guess the mean, right? That's all the data we have in, you know, and on average, you're going to be correct year to year. But um, let's assume that we observed YI. So we predicted Y bar and we observe say YI this value the error in that in that prediction is YI minus Y bar right we were just a little bit off and now we this error we could actually do for all of our data and that's called you know and and we look at that squared distance the squared error and we call that the total variation it's the sum of squares total, and it's defined like this. So it's our data minus the sample mean. And many of you will go, um, will notice that if we divide this by n minus 1, then that is the sample variance, which is an estimate of, of the, the variance of our data set. And so this is a legit measure of variability or the total variability in our data. You know, it kind of explains... You know the range of this okay so <clears throat> next we're going to look at residual variation okay so let's assume again that y is the yield of corn per acre but we have x which is the rain in inches for that season and we note that um, um, I'm going to try to do it without showing too much here so here, this is rain in inches, and this is yield of corn. And notice that if it doesn't rain much, then we don't really see much yield of corn. If it rains a little bit more, we see more corn that year, right? And so there's a linear relationship here. And how would we predict Y using X? So if, if the rain for this given year is here, how much corn do you think will we will yield well we would predict this much and and that's that's a smart guess we use the regression line to predict how much corn we're going to grow based upon the rain right if it's, we get a lot of rain it means the corn's going to grow more and it's going to we're going to predict a higher yield well um oh here's a note before we go on notice that i tried to make these use the same Y's. So if we take these Y's and push them down like this, that's what this represents, right? So there's a there's a mean somewhere um, in it, but here we're just, since we're using X to predict Y, then it becomes a scatter plot. All right, so we're gonna predict the YI bar. What's the error in our prediction? Well, let's assume we observe YI, but we predicted why I bar, you know, so um, we we predicted this much, you know, but we observed, you know, say this much. And so our prediction was a little bit off and that error is this. Now, if we look, we can and we can calculate the error for each of these, you know, for the, the YI minus what we would have predicted. And if we look at that squared error and sum them up over all data points, that's what we call the residual variation, or the sum of squares residual. Sometimes they call it sum of squares error, but it's really our predicted value, you know, our observed value minus what we predicted. In, but we use the linear regression model. And actually this sum of squares total is the same thing. This is what we observed 
minus what we predicted, you know, but we didn't use the regression line. So it's the same sort of concept. But notice that the, you know, the yi minus the predicted, you know, this variation going this way is actually much smaller than if we just use yi. The, the error is much bigger for the total than it is the residual. Okay. So that's two types. And we're going to look at one more called regression variation. And what it is, is what's the difference in our predicted value? So in one case, we, we use the mean to predict. In the other case, we use the regression line. So what's the error or the variation in that? And, so the, and, and they call that the variation associated with the regression line, right? So we would have normally used the mean, but now we're using the regression line. And what's that difference? And notice here, though, that the, so here's the mean, and here's the regression line. So if we look at this difference for each data point, you know, from the line to the mean, right, it's almost the same as if we'd have gone from the data point, right? The, this data point to the line, that data point. So actually, this is pretty close to the total sum of squares. Um, but this source of variation is called regression variation. So we look at the squared difference between what there are sort of two predictors. You know, if we use the naive way, the mean versus the least squares regression line and sum them up for all data points. That's what's called the regression sum of squares. And it's this. Okay. So a couple notes here, though. Notice that we said the total sum of squares and the regression sum of squares were very similar, right? If we go from the line to the mean versus the data point to the mean, they're actually very close. But the residual sum of squares, the data point to the line, actually that's really tight around this line, right? It's, so that's just a very small variation. So in this case, these are very close and this is very small. And what that means is the regression model helps. And what do I mean by help? Well, if it's X is low, then we're predicting down here and we're right, usually you know, more often than not, or we're much closer as opposed to using the mean. If there's a lot we would predict up here and we're going to be correct, you know, or the error is going to be much smaller, our prediction is. Okay. So now let's do it. Let's give an example where this is not the case. And that's this. So let's say our data point kind of looks flat. And um, so the total sum of squares, we kind of look at the top most data point and bring it over the top most. And it varies from here to here. And we calculate the sum of squares the same. We take a data point minus the mean, which is this dotted line here, it's, and the regression line. It's very close. Data point minus the mean is this. Now, the residual sum of squares is the data point minus the, the predicted line, so the variation around this line. But notice that the, varia the total variation you know, around the mean is actually very similar to the regression or the residual sum of squares, right? That it's about the same fluctuation. So they're very similar. And if we look at the sum of the regression sum of squares, that's the difference between the regression line and the mean. Look how close those are. So those differences are going to be very small, you know, compared to using a data point to a line, right? This is very small. So the regression sum of squares is small compared to the residual sum of squares and total sum of squares. And this means the model doesn't help at all, right? So if we if we observe a little x, we're going to predict this. If we observe a big x, it's roughly the same thing. So it doesn't help us at all. Okay. So um, in summary, these sums of squares are called regression sum of squares, residual sum of squares, total sum of squares. Now the total sum of squares is like the sample variance. You know, if we were to divide by n minus one, we'd get it. Now, the residual sum of squares is the fluctuation of our data point around the line, right? And in the previous video, if we divided this by n minus 2, that's a good estimate of 
of sigma squared, the variance or the fluctuation around the line. So that makes sense. And this one is the difference between what if we use this as a predictor versus the regression line as a predictor. And it turns out that when the regression sum of squares is very close to the total sum of squares, the regression line is helpful. So um, in this video, I, the next two pages, we're going to uh, we're going to prove some results, but then the next one to three videos, we're going to look at developing a test statistic based upon these three sums of squares that will help us know if the regression line is beneficial or not. Okay, so um, one one note here. So here I said this various variation associated with the regression line, right? If this is big, it means that it's very close to the total, which the model helps. Now, you hear the, the crazy phrase, and it's used so much, I need to introduce it, explained. So it's the variation explained by the regression model. That's what they call the regression sum of squares. Variation explained by the model, okay? I, I often, like it better you know it's the variation associated with the model versus you know using the mean but explained is used so much i'm going to use it in here but what it means look if we add up our data points and we add up our predicted values they're equal you know if we divide both sides by n minus one it says the average predicted value is the same as the average y value you know and if, if we sum them like this, it's zero. And so I think the word e explanation or explained by the model is, is kind of appropriate, but not totally. And these three uh, uh, formulas sort of indicate that the model and the data are, you know, they're close. So let's prove number three. So here is this. Then we... Um, we multiply this out, so that should be a squared. No, it shouldn't. So this, we take the sum in, right? And that's not index, we get n of them. Now we replace this with what it is. It's a least squares line, right? And then we take the sum in. There's no index, we get n of them. The sum comes into here, right? But now the estimate for beta zero is y bar minus beta one hat um, x bar. So that's a hat, not a bar. But now look, we got n y bar minus n y bar. We got n beta one x bar. We got n beta one x bar. They all subtract, so we get zero. Now, to go this term and this term, really I just divide by n and multiply by n to get that. So it does zero. Now we have two more results and we're going to call our quits. Now this result I want to go through before our main result which is the next one. Um, this is the residual sum of, or the regression error, right? Predi we could have predicted y but we predicted the regression line and look at that difference. And here's the residual. So the data point minus the least squares line. This product summed is zero. Okay, so let's go through that very quickly. So this, so now we'll take it times this, and then we'll take that times that, and bring the sum in, which are these two, right? This times the fitted value, this times y bar. Well, this piece, this sum right here, we showed in previous video number three in the list to be zero. So let's drop that out. Here, we plug in what the fitted value is, which is beta not hat, beta 1 hat x i, right? And then this comes down. Now let's multiply this times this first term, this times the second term. And so the first one is this, but this is the same sum as this, and that's zero. And then beta 1, we take this times that, bring in the sum, beta 1 doesn't, is an index, so it comes out. But this sum also, was shown in the previous video, number three in the list, to be zero, right? So this sum is zero. Now this next result is actually probably one of the most important things about linear models and design of experience, experiments. 
is taking the total variance and partitioning it into different types of variation. Okay, so for simple linear regression, now we studied two, you know, I intuitively talked about two, but that's all there is. So you can take this total and parse it, parcel it into or partition it into these two variations. And to me, that's very exciting. These two variations actually equal the total variation. And so let's prove that. So the total uh, sum, of sum of squares total is this, right? Data minus the mean. Let's add zero, add and subtract the same quantity. Now it's square, but we're going to think of this as a term and this as a term. So this times itself, this times itself, then this times that, that times that times two, we get this. Now let's take the sum in. But when we take the sum in, we're going to put this term here and this term here. And then the sum comes into this. But this is the sum that we just showed was zero. So this drops out. But this is what we were calling the sum of squares regression, right? Y bar in the fitted value. And this is the residual, our data minus the fitted line. And so it is. So the sum of squares total can be partitioned into these two types of vari variances or variabilities. And to me, that's so exciting. And when we get into multiple linear regression, it becomes even more exciting. Or design of experiments, it even becomes a little more exciting, a little funkier. Um, so the next one to three videos, we're going to use these three sums of squares. One, two, three to help us determine if the regression model is useful or not. Remember we said if, if the regression sum of squares is close to the total, the model's good. But if the residual sum of squares is close to the total, then the model's bad. So we're going to develop a test statistic, and whenever you do tests, you have to assume a distributional prop, you know, distribution underlying our data. And then we then we develop distributional properties of our test statistic, and then we, we conduct a test. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.